online family and friends. Thank you so much for joining us on tonight. We pray that you will share this video with your family and friends. Our scripture tonight will come from Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 19 through 21 from the New Living Translation. And it reads, Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. These scriptures admonish us to not store up our treasures on this earth, but store them up in heaven. Jesus makes it clear that storing our treasures in the wrong place will lead our hearts being in the wrong place. What we treasure the most controls us, whether we admit it or not. What we think about, talk about, or spend our money on can dominate us. Jesus wants us to make a decision to live for him and be content with whatever we have. For those of us who have chosen Jesus, we have chosen eternal values over temporary earthly treasures. So have you made Jesus your choice? If not, today is a mighty good day to make him your choice. The song says, I've decided to make Jesus my choice. Some folk would rather have houses and land. Some folk choose silver and gold. These things they treasure and forget about their souls. But I've decided to make Jesus my choice. The road is rough, the going gets tough, and the kills are hard to climb. But I started out a long time ago, and there is no doubt in my mind that I decided to make Jesus my choice.
of coming before you again. We thank you for the honor, Father God, for being a part of your service. Now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Bless our lives that we would hear from you. Bless us, Father God, to focus on you and you alone. Lord, we ask you to speak to us by way of your word on tonight, that our lives will be made the better, that we can run and tell men, women, boys, and girls about the kingdom of God and how he has blessed us. It's in the name of Jesus we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. I've decided, I've made a decision, I've made a decision. I have made my own decision. And in this decision, I made the choice of Jesus. I've decided to make Jesus, I've decided to make Jesus my choice. To make Jesus, Jesus the Christ, I've decided to make him my choice. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us again tonight for our Bible study. Thank you for being with us one more again for the study of the word. God has blessed us and God has kept us one more time. And he's given us the privilege to come before him. And we thank him. We, we glorify God. We praise him for who he is and what he has already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. He has blessed us one more time. And for that, we are thankful. We are thankful to him for blessing us one more time. Thank God for who he is and what he has already done. We're in Philemon again tonight. We're in the book of Philemon. We took a break on last week from Philemon, but we want to we want to cover some ground on tonight. We're looking at Philemon, verses 8 through verse 16. Philemon, verses 8 through verse 16. Somebody said he didn't give a chapter. Well, there's only one chapter, so there's no need to give a chapter. We're looking at the book of Philemon, verses 8 through 16. Verse number 8 through verse number 16. We find the Apostle Paul here writing again, and the Apostle Paul is writing, and he's talking very, very strongly about forgiveness. The Apostle Paul is talking about forgiveness. He is talking about forgiveness. He is talking to us about forgiveness. The Apostle Paul is talking about forgiveness. He writes a letter to Philemon, Philemon, who is a slave owner, but he's a personal friend of, friend of Paul, and he's a man of God. Uh, Philemon is believed to have church in his house, and he and the Apostle Paul was associates in the Word of God, associates in the Gospel of Jesus Christ. So Philemon had a slave that had run away. This runaway slave was named Onesimus. Onesimus, some people call him Onesimus. Onesimus was a runaway slave. Uh, he had run away from Philemon's house. And he found himself in the presence of Paul. So Paul has owned him as his son in the ministry. He has been walking with uh, the Apostle Paul. Paul has owned him as a son in the ministry. And now this once runaway criminal, this once runaway slave, Paul deemed him as being useful to the body of Christ as well as useful to Philemon. And we will find that out tonight. Paul is thanking God for Philemon because of Philemon's love, because of his faith in God, because of his steadfastness in the Holy Spirit. Paul thanks Philemon. And Paul approaches Philemon 
in a tone of a fellow slave, a fellow prisoner. He says, I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, as I've said several times before, you are a slave to something or somebody. And if you're not a slave to Jesus Christ, you are a slave to the devil. If you're not a prisoner for Jesus Christ, you are a prisoner of the devil. My, my, my. So we want to make sure that we dig into what Paul is saying tonight. Let's look at verse number 8 and go to verse number 16. We have a whole lot of ground to cover based on what we normally cover. If we don't get there, we'll pick it up next week. Amen. So Philemon, Philemon is, is the person that's being addressed in this letter. And the, the subject matter of this letter is Onesimus, or Onesimus. And the writer here is the Apostle Paul, and he writes in the presence of Timothy. Verse number eight, therefore, though I have been very bold in Christ to command you what is fitting, yet for love's sake, I rather appeal to you being such a one as Paul, the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Look at Paul's tone. Paul says, he says that, that I have been bold in times past. I have been so bold in times past until I have committed you to things based on my commandments. Paul said, I have boldly commanded you, and I have the right even today to boldly command you to accept Onesimus back, Onesimus back. I am boldly commanding people by way of the word of God. I have done that way with you before, but this time I'm not commanding you to do what is fitting. Yet because of love's sake, yet because the love we have for one another, the love we have for one another in Christ Jesus, I am not commanding you this time. What I am doing this time is I'm making an appeal. I am pleading with you. I am pleading the case of Onesimus. This word pleading means that it's a courtroom term that, that means the lawyer pleads the case, the defense attorney Please, the case of one that is guilty. All of them realize that Onesimus is guilty. It is true that he's a runaway slave. It is true that he has committed a crime. It is true that he is guilty as charged. You see, during biblical days, slaves were not only considered persons, but they were also considered property. So here it is, Onesimus, who is the property, the runaway slave of Philemon. Now he has become one who walks with Christ. Now he has become born again. Now he is one that loves the Lord. And since he is one that loves the Lord now, Paul pleads his case as a lawyer would plead the case of somebody who's guilty. I know you I know you're saying you're saying but preacher I'm not guilty of any wrongdoing. I hear you you're saying but preacher I don't do the things that other people do. I don't prostitute. I don't do drugs. I don't sell drugs. I don't fight in a gang. But let me tell you even if you don't do these things you do some things and you have done some things. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Romans 3 and 23 that we all have sinned. We'd like to rewrite the Bible to say y'all have sinned, but the Bible said we all have sinned. We all have fallen short. We all have messed up. And it doesn't matter how long you've been saved. The Bible teaches us, 1 John chapter 1 teaches us that if a man say that he does not sin, he is a liar. And the truth is not in him. And therefore, we must come to the conclusion, not only do they sin, we sin. Yes, so don't get so tied up on Onesimus being a runaway slave that's been caught 
or been, been pushed aside or somebody that should be condemned to death because you have a day too. Your times have been messed up too. Things about you have gone wrong too. And there are some things that have gone wrong with you that you brought on the scene. In other words, no one forced you, no one made it happen, no one falsely accused you. You are guilty as charged. Yes. So don't get all bent out of shape over Philemon being a runaway slave, being a prisoner. That's why we in the church, we can't get so spiritual that when one comes out of prison, we continue to judge him or her. We must get to a point in our lives well, we understand and realize very, very well that we are just as guilty of something, as they would say back home, some other, as others are. So Paul comes with a simple tone, a different tone that we know from the Apostle Paul. He says, therefore, though I might be very bold in Christ to command you what is fitting. He says, Philemon, this is fitting to do. It is fitting that you accept Onesimus back. It is fitting that you accept, accept this runaway slave who is guilty. It is fitting. And I could command you to do it. But, or yet, for love's sake, I rather appeal to you. I rather ask you. I rather ask you to make it happen. I, I rather appeal to your love. I believe that you are a brother in Christ, and because you're a brother in Christ, you understand. Mm -hmm. You get the message. You understand that God wants to bless you, and he wants to bless Onesimus also. Mm -hmm. He said, because of love's sake, I want to appeal to you, being such a one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus. He's saying... I am the aged Paul. I am an older brother in the ministry. And the older brother in the ministry ought to be able to tell you something. Mm -hmm. God delivered me from preachers, from missionaries, from evangelists, from teachers that cannot be told anything that is right. God delivered me from the one who who has it all together and they don't need a mentor. They don't need anybody, anyone speaking into their lives. They really actually got it all together. The moment you come to the point where you think you got it all together, you do not have it all together. Yes. The apostle Paul says, I'm the aged one. He says, because I'm Paul. First of all, he says a lot when he says I'm Paul. He says, being such one as Paul the aged one. Being such one as Paul the aged one. What he's saying here is that people in biblical days respect people who had some age on them. These days, the 20th century, we respect people with age. In the 21st century, we got a respect problem. In the 20th century, anybody on the block, anybody in the church, anybody in the city was able to say something to us. And we better get in line. It's just as, as if uh, our brother Deacon Dick Dixon or a Deacon Lord or Deacon Singleton, a, one, a Deacon Chance, somebody would say something to us and it was law. Any deacon in the church, Deacon Beckwood, any deacon in the church could say something and we better not say they lie. Right. Paul says that, that I could command you to do this because I'm the aged one. I could command you to make this happen because I'm the one that's spiritually your father also. Even though we're brothers in the ministry, we need to have somebody that we can listen to. Every pastor needs a pastor. Amen. And every pastor ought to be able to speak into your life. And every pastor ought to be able to discipline other pastors. I mean, you can't walk around and let everybody put you in check, but you ought to have a reliable, God-fearing pastor that can speak into your life. 
And you know that he doesn't mean you any harm. You know that they're going to do the right thing for you. You know that they're going to speak to you. My mentor growing up was, was Pastor Billy Ray Love. He lived on the same street. He told me what to do. I did it. He mentored a lot of young preachers. Uh, my pastor growing up was Pastor uh, Ariel Reed, and I sit in the choir stand. Yeah, I, I used to sit in the choir stand, y'all. I used to sit in the choir stand and lean over and listen to every word he said, everything that came out of his mouth. The late, the late pastor, Pastor Allen, the, the late pastor Jefferson, they spoke into my life. And I think I came out all right. I had my ups and downs. I had my issues just like you have yours. Paul is saying to us today that I am not only appeal, appealing, to you, appealing to you as an aged one, I'm also appealing to you as a prisoner of Jesus Christ. He says, we are brothers. We are brothers in the, in the ministry of Jesus Christ. And I want you to hear me, Philemon. I want you to hear me well. There ought to not only be somebody who speaks into your life, who governs, help to govern your life, but there ought to be somebody on the same level with you that can speak into your life. Not only does everyone need a pastor, they also need a friend who can tell them when they're right or wrong. You, you have to have a friend that can tell you, man, you, you ain't doing the right thing. I still to this day have my childhood friend who can speak into my life. Brother Rennie Haney can tell me point blank, you are wrong. Everybody needs somebody who can speak into their life that is on their same level. And the third group, the third couple that need to be real is that person that is under you. You need to be able to speak into somebody else's life. In other words, you need to be able to mentor somebody else. Somebody else ought to respect you enough to listen to you. If no one respect you enough to listen to you, you better check yourself because you're getting ready to wreck yourself. So there ought to be some little boy that's watching you. Some little boy that's looking at you or some girl that's looking at you and say, I want to be just like her. I want to be just like him when I grow up. I admire him from a distance. I never told him. I never told her. But that little child is watching you from a distance. Yes. You ought to be able to speak into that child's life. And that child ought to look up to you. Are you a godly example for them? Paul says in verse number 10, I appeal to you for my son Onesimus who I have begotten while in chains. Paul says we were both locked up. <laughs> we were both in jail. And while he was in prison and I was in prison, I was sharing the gospel ministry with him. He became saved in prison. He became my son. I begot him in prison. He became my son in the ministry in prison. He's speaking for him. And the other thing that you need, you need somebody that's willing to speak up for you. <laughs> You need somebody that's willing to speak up for you when you're in trouble. The problem is we have friends and family members that are with us as long as we're doing the right thing. But the moment we get in trouble, they get gone. We need friends and family members who will speak up for us and stand for us. I oftentimes tell the New Beginning Church, if I'm charged with anything, there ought to be somebody that will speak up and say, that's not the man I know. Yes. That's not the person I know. I don't know him that way. Mm -hmm. So Paul says, he became my son in ministry while we both were serving in prison. We were in chains. Verse number 11, who once was unprofitable to you, and now it's profitable to you and to me. He says about Onesimus, not only am I speaking up for him, but I'm speaking up for him and reminding you at one time he wasn't even a good slave. <laughs> at one time he wasn't profitable to you. There was a period in Onesimus' life that he was not profitable, he was not beneficial to you, but now Onesimus is a good guy. Now Onesimus is beneficial. 
Now Onesimus is profitable. Not only is he profitable to you now, but he is also profitable to me. What are you talking about, Paul? Paul saying that he's now profitable. He, he is now profitable to you. Now Onesimus is coming back. And when Onesimus come back, you're going to see a different guy. That's how people ought to talk about us. When people say, I remember when he wasn't right. I remember when he wasn't this. I remember when he did this. You remind them he's a different person. Mm -hmm. Somebody ought to be able to say about you that you are somebody different now. Yeah. When I go back home, they see a different person now. I don't have to fake it. I don't have to jake it. I don't have to make it happen. They see a different person from what they saw when I was 20. 18, 17, they see a different person now. My question to you tonight, are you different? Have you changed? You don't have to go to prison and come back and say you're changed. You don't have to go to prison and get out of prison and be on fire for the Lord. You can be on fire for the Lord without going to prison. You can be on fire for the Lord and be profitable. Paul says, he was profitable to me in prison. He's profitable to me now. And guess what, Philemon? He's profitable to you. So he presents him. He presents him as one who is valuable. Let me say to you, my dears, you are valuable to God. Amen. You are somebody special to God. God has taken you from nothing to something. And even if you're having a hard time now, you are valuable to God. Yes. If you're thinking about giving up, don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. You are valuable to God. You are profitable. You are beneficial. Not only are you valuable to God, you are beneficial and you are profitable to the gospel of Jesus Christ. So stop feeling sorry for yourself. Get off the pity party. Get busy working for the Lord. And don't be ashamed to get in church because you hadn't been in church in a long time. You see, because you can't be ashamed to go back to church after you've been out a long time because there are some who've been in church, but the church hadn't been in them in a long time. Ooh, good God Almighty. There are some who has been in the doors there are some who's been listening on the internet, but the church has not been in them for a long time. So let me say to you today, if you've been out, get back in. Yes. If it's right to be in church, it's got to be wrong to be out of church. That's right. If it's right to be in Christ, it's got to be wrong to be out of Christ. I want to tell you, I want to serve you notice tonight that you are profitable to God. You are profitable to the kingdom. You are profitable to the world and you're profitable to the church. Come on back in this house. Come on in this house. Come on in this house. We used to march into a song and we used to sing, there's a brighter day ahead. Let me tell you, there's a brighter day ahead. Don't give up on today. Don't base today on the rest of your life. And don't blame, blame the don't base the rest of your life on what happens today. Yes. Tides come, floods come, busted pipes come, freezes come, climate control is out of whack right now. But don't give up today. God got something better coming. Yes. Hang in there. You are profitable. You are beneficial. You are beneficial to God. You are beneficial to the kingdom of God. Verse number 12, I am sending him back. You therefore receive him, that is, my own heart. Paul says, I'm, I'm sending him back. I'm sending him back. I'm sending him back. Paul is writing this letter to Philemon, telling him, I'm sending Onesimus back. In other words, I am making sure that your runaway slave come back to you and don't keep running. But he's already, I've already told you, he's profitable to you now. Mm -hmm. he, he, he will make a difference in your ministry. He'll make a difference in your household. He'll make a, district, a difference in, in your market. He is profitable. Yeah. 
He is marketable. He is special now. Let me tell you, when a man get in, get in love with Christ, he's a different creature. When a man submits to Jesus Christ, and I mean man, woman, boy, girl, when a man, woman, boy, girl submits to Jesus Christ, let me just share with you today, you got yourself something. Mm -hmm. You got yourself something when a man submits to Jesus Christ. When a man, woman, boy, or girl submit to Jesus Christ, they are different. They are profitable. They have changed. <laughs> they, a, a difference has been made in their lives. He says, I'm sending him back. This, this, this phrase, sending him back, this phrase, sending him back, means that Paul is vouching for him. Paul is laying down his word for him. I'm sending him back. You therefore receive him back. You therefore accept him back. You therefore receive him. That is my heart. I struggle with that phrase, that is. But Paul is saying, my heart's desire is that you receive him. My heart's desire is that you understand he has paid his debt to society. My heart's desire is, number one, you receive him. Number two, you understand he's paid his debt to society. And the third thing Paul says is that I'm giving you my heart. <laughs> Onesimus has become my heart. Onesimus is my heart. Mm -hmm. So he says three things. He says, my heart's desire is you receive him. My heart's desire is that you forgive him. And my heart's desire is that you understand that Onesimus has my heart. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, when someone works faithfully with you in ministry, they pull on your heartstrings. Because it's very seldom that you can find one who will work closely in your ministry, find out your, your shortcomings, and still respect you and still work faithfully with you. Very seldom. I've had a bunch of preachers come by the New Beginning Church, <laughs> whole heap of them, and I could tell within the first week where their hearts are. Mm -hmm. I can tell if they have arterial motors. I just have to let it play out. Mm -hmm. Let the Lord use them and let the Lord allow them to run themselves off. You see, we don't have to fight through stuff. We just let the Lord fix it. Right. And every time the Lord fixed it, he may not have fixed it the way I wanted it to be fixed, but God did it well. Yeah. And God showed the people and me what was best for us. Mm -hmm. Paul said, this is my heart. My heart, <laughs> this is my heart. My heart's desire for you is that you, you receive him. Now, verse 13, whom I wish to keep with me, that on, my, on your behalf, you might minister, he might minister to me in chains for the gospel. <clears throat> Paul says, not only has Onesimus changed, he's a good minister now. And I need him to stay here with me so he can minister to me. There's another point I want to make to you today. When a disciple matures, he will be better than his teacher. When the disciple matures, he will be better than his teacher. Because you take what the disciple brings to the table, you take what the teacher brings to the table, and you put those two together, that makes a mature disciple. The problem is, if the disciple is not willing to learn, then the teacher won't be able to force it in him. But once the disciple matures, he will be better than his teacher. He will have some of the same mannerism as the teacher. He will have some of the same structure as the teacher. But really, 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 at the end of the day, the disciple, the mature disciple, will always be better than the teacher. Paul says, I want him to stay here with me. <laughs> that, that, that on your behalf, he might minister to me. In my chains. What Paul is saying is, he's saying, Philemon, you and I used to share in ministry together. You and I are no longer together now. But on your behalf, 
because he came out of your house. He learned from you and he learned from me. On your behalf, I wish that he could stay here so he can minister to me. God delivered me from the pastor that nobody can tell anything. God delivered me from, from the pastor where his son in the ministry can't tell him anything. God delivered me from pastors and teachers and preachers and evangelists that cannot hear from those who serve under them. Don't you know that they got something to say too? Don't you know that, that God is speaking in their lives too? So Paul says, Paul says, I wish I, I could keep him here with me. I wish I could just keep him here with me for he can minister to me in my chains <laughs> for the gospel's sake. When you teach them well, they will make you proud. When you teach them well, they will make you proud. I look forward to sowing into a young man's life so one day he can take the New Beginning Church farther than I can ever dream of. I, I look forward to the day where young one young man, and he may be in our children's Sunday school class, he, he may not be born yet, but I look forward to the day where I can, can help to train him and let God pour into him and watch God mature him. And all of a sudden, I slowly back back, take my hands off it and watch him run with it and develop the church, grow the church more than I could ever dream of. Because you know what? I'm getting old now. I'm 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 three years I'm I'm two and a half years from sixty, and what we have to do is we have to do all we can do while we can do it and get our old self out the way so some young person can do better with it. Now you won't hear many, many preachers say that, but a lot of churches are killed because somebody is still sitting by a brook that is already dried up. Woo-wee, when the brook dries up, you need to move on. I want to be able to sow in a young man's life so he can be ministered to and mentored by me, where he can mature and be better than I am, be greater than I am, go farther than I can ever go. I talk about being a missionary for five years in Brazil and Czech Republic. I, I talk about, about passing the New Beginning Church up to 30 years or, or whenever God says it's over. And I talk about writing books, and now that book is, is been that one book has been translated into eight languages. I, I talk about doing long distance presentations of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. I talk about how when when callers call me those and selling stuff on the phone, I'm able to turn that conversation toward Jesus. And if they stay on the phone long enough, I'll lead them to Christ. All those things are good, but I know that God is raising up a one that is better than I am. Paul says he wished Onesimus could stay here and minister to him. I'm looking forward to God raising up a young man that can minister to me. That can bless me. That I will even listen to. That will be structurally sound in doctrine. That the Lord Jesus Christ will be able to bless. We ought to be able to, to walk away and let somebody else handle this thing. Because if we don't walk away, we're going to die away anyway. We're going to get out of here one day. When you leave, you ought to be prepared. And we want to leave the church prepared. I hope I ain't preached my own funeral here tonight. <laughs> but we ought to be prepared. Verse 14. But without your consent, I wanted to do nothing. That your good deed might not be by compulsion as it were, but voluntary. Paul says... I wanted to just keep him here with me. I wanted to make the decision, let Onesimus stay here with me, but by our love that we have for one another, I want your good deed to show forth, that your good deed will not be by compulsion. In other words, I'm not commanding you, but I want you to make up your own mind, not by compulsion. 
This word compulsion means not by force. I don't want to force you, even though I could command you, even though I could tell you what to do. I don't want it to be by compulsion. I want you to forgive this fella, receive him back, welcome him back, and treat him like a brother in Christ. Look at what he said. He says, I want you to do it voluntarily. He is writing a letter of recommendation. Let me tell you, letter, letters of recommendation will always go further than no word at all. He's writing him a letter of recommendation. And whenever you have a letter of recommendation, that letter is only as good as the person that wrote it. That's why we scramble and look for the best person for the recommendation. One of the best letter of recommendations you can get is from your former supervisor. You can get a letter of recommendation and you can get that letter of recommendation from a former supervisor that you had. It speaks volumes to the future of your, your employment. Yes, I mean, you need to get a letter. So Paul says that I'm writing this letter as a letter of recommendation. Verse number 15, for perhaps he departed for a while for this purpose that you might receive him forever. Paul talks about God. This, this phrase, he, he left for this purpose. Paul talks about the possibility of God having divine intervention. Paul says it may have been in God's will all along. Mm -hmm. Paul talks about the fact that he may have left for a while. He may have departed for this while just so he can come back better. That you might receive him forever. You see, the fact of the matter is, if Onesimus had been caught he was Philemon's property. If he had been caught, he could take him back and do whatever he wanted to do with it, but it was a chance of him running away again. But Paul says, now that you got him back, you can receive him and you can keep him there forever. Isn't that something? You can keep him there forever. It may have been that God was behind the scene working things out for you. Because you know God is working things out behind the scene, don't you? God is working things out right behind the scene right now while I'm talking to you. Whatever you're going through, whatever your life may look like, God is working behind the scene. Yes. You got to stay with God. What he's saying to Philemon, Philemon, you are a man of God. You are a person that walks with God. And you don't have to be a preacher, Philemon. Everybody tonight that's listening to me, name is Philemon tonight. And while you listen to me tonight, and your name is Philemon, let me just say to you tonight that you have been going through whatever you're going through. And as you're going through it, God is working behind the scene. God is fixing it up for you behind the scene because he says to Philemon, he may have departed for a while, but God himself meant it for good. You can't just hear Joseph. Joseph says, y'all meant this thing for evil, but God meant it for good. They, they threw Joseph in a dungeon. They, they sold him off in slavery. They told his daddy that a wild animal killed him. And then they ended up going before Joseph, buying down and asking for food and drink. Joseph said to his brother, y'all meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. So, so, so Philemon has to hear these words from the apostle Paul that God may have worked this thing out for your good, man. I would much rather have the present day, present day Onesimus than the past Onesimus. Are you with me? He's going to be faithful to you now because you love the Lord. That's why folk who are Christians cannot be unfaithful to their employers. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't get a new job by talking about your present employer. Yes. When they ask you why you're leaving the company, you can't rat out your present employer because they know that you're going to rat them out too. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm suing them. Woo, good God Almighty, he's going to sue us too. So he writes this letter and he says to him, this is for your own good. 
Could it be that God has brought him back forever? God has brought him back forever. Verse 16, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave. He says, God has brought this fellow back to you and he's not bringing him back as a slave. He's bringing him back as a brother, a beloved brother in the Lord. He says he's not bringing him back the same way he was when he left here. He's different now. He, he knows the Lord. He loves the Lord. He's in ministry for the Lord. And if I could keep him here with me, i let him minister to me because he is a strong tower now. This brother here is something else now. He's different. He says no longer is he considered a slave when he come back, but he's more than a slave. He is a beloved brother, especially to me. Paul reiterates that how much respect he has for Onesimus. He says, he says, I, I reiterate to you, this is a beloved brother of mine. I want you to accept him for who he is. He's a beloved brother. And then he says, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord? This brother going to come back. He's going to not only help you in the flesh, but he's going to help you in the Lord. <laughs> he's going to help you. He's going to help you. He's different now. He's changed. He's going to help you in the flesh. The, the, the slaves that you got right now, <laughs> put him over the slaves. He's going to make sure your work gets done. He's different. And not only is he going to make sure the work get done when it comes to the other slaves, he's going to treat the other slaves right because now he's a beloved brother. Now he's no longer a slave. He's a beloved brother. He's going to treat the slaves right. He's going to treat his master right. He's going, to, he's going to treat those on the same level as he's on. He's going to treat them all right. Because when God has changed your heart, you're different. When God has made you different, they can see that you are different. So Onesimus is going to be different to you in the flesh. <laughs> Meaning in this, this body, he's going to be different. But not only is he going to be different in the flesh, he's going to be more in the flesh. He gonna, when he used to try to run away, he's going to have an opportunity with the door left open, he's going to hang around the house. He's going to be different in the flesh. And then finally, he's going to be different in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I'm not sending you back any junk, man. I'm sending you a beloved brother, a brother that's different, yes. a brother that's been changed by the spirit of the Lord. I'm sending him back to you. I need you to receive him because he's better now in the flesh. He's better now in the Lord. He's going to be a benefit to you. He is profitable to you. He, may, he has a difference that has been made in his life, and he's ready to share with other people the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a powerful moment here. He asked him to, to forgive him. Let me tell you something tonight. Some of you are in bondage because you haven't forgiven somebody. When you have not forgiven one, then you are locked up in prison yourself. When you think you're holding somebody down because I ain't going to forgive them. I'm going to stay as mad as I can at them. You are locking yourself up. Because when you put somebody in prison, you got to stay there and hold the key. You can't get busy doing anything either. Dr. King says it like this. You can't hold a good man down unless you get in the mud with them. And then still he's going to rise. I'm going to say to you today, forgive them. It's not worth holding on to. Forgive them. Let it go. <laughs> Turn it loose. Couples have to forgive each other. Couples have to forgive each other and, and move on. Brothers have to forgive each other and move on. Love doesn't recall the wrongdoing over and over and over and over again. We have to get to a point where we forgive people. Because God is willing to forgive you. Amen. God will forgive you for whatever you've done. 
Doesn't matter how bad you think it is, God will forgive you. He'll make a difference in your life. God is willing to make a difference in your life. And you may be listening to me today and you need a difference made in your life. I say commit your life to Jesus. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. Just as you are. I had to come to him. The songwriter who had me write. The songwriter said I was wounded. I was sad. I was broken down. But Jesus has made me glad. If you've never received Jesus as your personal savior, this is your moment. You can receive him right here, right now. The door of the church is open. Will you trust the story? You see, Onesimus had to trust the story that Jesus died for his sins. He was buried in a borrowed tomb and he rose from the dead. Will you try him tonight? Yeah, you tried her, it didn't work. You've tried him, he let you down. You've tried them, they shut the door on you. I recommend that you try Jesus and some of you tried it. And it took you up on an extreme high and it dropped. I recommend Jesus. Jesus, the son of God, who gave his life as a ransom for you and me. Will you try him today? The door is open. The invitation is extended. You can try him by just repeating this simple prayer after me and inviting Jesus to come into your life. Why don't you try him today? Will you bow your head with me and in, invite Jesus into your heart? You can do it by this simple prayer. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you prayed this prayer, honestly believing that Jesus is the Son of God and he died for your sins, believing that Jesus is the only thing that can get you from earth to heaven, we believe that you're born again. You're on your way to heaven when you die. And there may be somebody else who, who's already saved, know that you are, but for some reason or the other, you, you've fallen away from the church. You've fallen away from the Lord. You've fallen into sin. This is your moment. Will you recommit to him? Will you rededicate to him? Will you renew your right spirit with him? David says, Lord, re renew a right spirit within me. Let me say to you, if you're saved, your commitment is not what it ought to be. Whether you're not committed to, to the Lord, whether you're not committed to the church, whether you're not committed to your family, whether you're not committed to giving to the church, this is your moment. Will you join me in prayer? Lord Jesus, we pray for those who are listening. We pray, Father God, that you bless them to recommit, renew, revive, rededicate, reconnect to you. Lord, we ask you to strengthen them, encourage them, and keep them focused. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to bless them, Father God, to know that there is no God like you. And that you are here to keep them strong and to bless their lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. And if you're here and you don't have a church home, I rep recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. Where Jesus is the captain of the ship. He, he guides its movement. 
you may choose to join. If so, you can do so by inboxing me and let me know and I'll send you all the pertinent information. And you can be a member of the New Beginning Church, whether you're locally or globally associated with us, we'll be glad to take you in. Thank you so much for listening tonight. Thank you for being a part of our service. It is now offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord. It is time to give to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can do so in several ways. Our first preferable gift way of giving is through Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. This is where we prefer that you give. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The second way you can give is by P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. And the third way that you can give, and we're slowly moving away from Cash App, but presently you can still give by way of Cash App. Our cash tag is NBC Souls, dollar sign, NBC Souls, dollar sign, NBC Souls, dollar sign, NBC Souls. Again, thank you for being a part of our service tonight. We're looking forward to seeing you every Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. Looking forward to seeing you and hearing from you every Sunday morning for Sunday School, same channels. Uh, you can meet us in Sunday School at 9 a.m. every Sunday morning. And we do not take Fifth Sunday off, so come at 9 a.m. every Sunday morning. And then for our worship service, our broadcast worship service, it's at 1045 every Sunday, 1045 a.m. every Sunday. Please join us if you can. We here at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John chapter 12, verse 32. Uh, in our prayer meeting on last night, we have prayer meeting by way of phone on second Tuesday. We have prayer meeting by way of Zoom on fourth Tuesday. So in our prayer meeting last night, we want to, to mention those who we were praying for last night and ask you to continue to pray for them. Uh, we're praying for piano students, for Or Davis piano students and Turning Hearts piano students. We're praying that they become more obedient and more motivated. More obedient, more motivated. We're praying for uh, Donald Mitchell and family. We're praying for them in their time of bereavement. We're praying for them. We're still praying for the residents of Houston, Texas, as we're still going through. Many still don't have electricity nor water, or some have one or the other. We're praying for those residents who have suffered loss during this terrible freezing storm. Some have suffered loss in losing loved ones. Some have suffered loss in losing property. Some are, are on the streets and this place. We want to pray for the Houston, Texas area, uh, uh, the state of Texas. And we want to pray that, that people don't have to pay these high light bills. Outrageous, thuggish. If you want to know some gangsters, look at the people that's in control. <laughs> there's, some, there's some gangsters out here these days. So we want to pray that people don't have to pay these high electric light bills. They're already getting word that their bills um, are overdue and their electricity is going to be cut off. We're in the middle of a pandemic. We're, we're, in a, we're coming out of a freeze where bursted pipes and, and where plumbers can't be found because they're so busy. And now we got electric bills that are skyrocketing. We want to lift those people in prayer. We want to keep praying for the New Beginning Church. We thank God that 
that God has kept us. God has blessed our church building. God has blessed our church people. God has blessed the people of God. And we thank God for it. We'll pray for the Atonga family. We also want to pray for the Darrington family. We want to lift them, lift them and pray. April, April 4th is Resurrection Sunday. April 4th is Resurrection Sunday. Pastor Watson and I are looking forward to a parking lot service on April 4th. We're looking to a resurrection parking lot service right out there by the cross. We have a 50-foot cross standing in our front yard, a 50-foot cross standing there. We want to acknowledge Jesus Christ right out there by the cross. And we want to also acknowledge Jesus Christ as our church is a, a big blue cross laying on the ground. So we got crosses everywhere and we need to come to the cross and experience a new beginning. That's April 4th at uh, 1045. April 4th at 1045. We wanna, we wanna bring in Resurrection Sunday as we did last Resurrection in a parking lot service. I'm gonna ask you don't blow your corn to say amen, just say amen, amen. Uh, please come, one come all to the New Beginning Church for our parking a parking lot service for Resurrection Sunday. Amen. God bless you and God keep you as our prayer. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we come now thanking you. We bless you. We honor you. We magnify you. We lift you. Lord, we praise you for you are worthy. We give you the glory. We give you the honor and the praise. Lord, we pray for those we've called out in prayer. Bless those we have not called out. We pray, Father God, that you bless them. Bless the bereaved. Bless children to get focus in school. Bless them to get focus in piano lessons. We, we pray, Father God, that you bless the school system, that they will educate well. Bless teachers, principals, counselors, assistants, janitors in school systems. Bless program directors. Bless assistance, Father God, to every area. Bless us to learn. Bless us to learn well. Bless our children to know that they're smarter than what they think and that God is willing to give them answers if they apply the work. Lord, we pray, Father God, for blessing us in times like these. We thank you now. We thank you that you continue to watch over us. And Lord, we know that there's no help like your help. We thank you and we bless your name. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him, the only wise and true God. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.